PCM will store a DTC when the test results from a monitor are out of the prescribed range. Monitor fails. With type A failures, the PCM will store a hard code and activate the MIL after the first trip. This is known as one-trip detection logic. Where type B failures are concerned, the PCM will store a pending code on the first trip but will not illuminate the MIL. If the problem occurs on the second consecutive trip, however, the PCM will store a hard code and command the MIL on. This is called two-trip detection logic. A monitor is used for the diagnostic tests run by the PCM. Monitors are executed on a continuous and non-continuous basis, meaning some monitors run all the time and others only run once, regardless if they completed or failed. The monitors are used to determine if the systems and components of the engine management systems are operating within intended parameters. A trip in the federal generic form is the term applied to a key on, engine run, key off cycle, during which time the vehicle was operated in a way that satisfied all of the enabled criteria for at least one monitor. The scan tool will allow the recording of live data to help track down intermittent drivability problems. However, unless the problem appears while you're in the flight record mode, the captured data is relatively useless. Because of this, OBD2 regulations require the onboard computer to record a single frame of live data, known as a freeze frame, the moment the first emissions-related failure is recognized. This snapshot of information can be viewed on the scan tool when the freeze frame function is selected. Freeze frame data is only available for the first DTC and can only be overwritten by a DTC with a higher priority. For instance, misfire failures. Freeze frame data can be a source point for diagnostics as when a DTC is set and an FF snapshot is taken by the PCM, you should be able to view the following information on the scan tool in the freeze frame data window. Calculated load value, throttle and fuel demand, engine RPM, short-term and lion-term fuel trims, fuel pressure if available, vehicle speed, engine coolant temperature, intake pressure if available, closed or open loop status, and diagnostic trouble code. Freeze frame data gives you an initial picture of what happened when a DTC has been set, which provides a diagnostic index to the root cause of the DTC. DTCs can be cleared using the scan tool. This is the preferred method for clearing codes since disconnecting the battery causes memory loss in the other electronic systems, for instance, the radio, memory seats, ATM, etc. It is highly recommended that any DTCs found are to be left into the system until the fault has been corrected. If any DTC is reviewed and then erased, readiness status and freeze frame data will be lost. Do not erase DTCs until the vehicle has been repaired. The PCM will automatically remove any stored DTCs following the completion of 40 consecutive warm-up cycles in which there was no occurrence of the original failure. For type A failures, 80 consecutive warm-up cycles are generally required without incident before the PCM will clear the stored DTC. DTCs can be erased on a vehicle when the battery or the PCM is disconnected for at least five minutes and the battery leads touch together, removed from the battery. On other vehicles, disconnecting the battery or PCM will have no effect. This is because the computer on some vehicles is able to retain stored data for several days after the power has been removed. In the OBD-1 system, a computer counted key cycles to determine when code should be automatically cleared from memory. With OBD-2, the PCM counts warm-up cycles. A warm-up cycle occurs when the engine is started and operated long enough for coolant temperature to rise at least 40 degrees Fahrenheit and reach a minimum temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit and beyond. Be aware that the PCM will only recognize a warm-up cycle if engine starting temperature is less than 160 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Engine starting temperatures above 160 degrees Fahrenheit are not counted toward a warm-up cycle even if coolant temperature rises the required 40 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, the PCM will cancel a warm-up cycle if it detects any faults during the warm-up period. The malfunction indicator light, or MIL, is the universal term applied to the OBD2 warning light. The MIL will be displayed as the ISO engine symbol. The PCM activates the MIL and stores a DTC and freeze frame data anytime it detects a failure that could cause emissions to rise above 1.5 times the FTP or Federal Test Procedure standard. On OBD2 systems, the MIL is not used for flash code diagnostics as it was on the OBD1 vehicles. This is why a scan tool is necessary for retrieving OBD2 trouble codes. The MIL will stay illuminated on an OBD2 system until the vehicle completes three consecutive trips without the PCM recognizing a repeat failure. For severe system malfunctions, including misfires and fuel trim problems, the MIL will stay illuminated until the vehicle is operated for three consecutive trouble-free trips under conditions similar to those that existed during the initial failure. MIL Operation Status the MIL will remain on steady under KOEO, or key on engine off, conditions. However, there are some models where the MIL will come on briefly and then go out when the key is turned off, engine off. This is considered normal and is not an indication of a problematic MIL circuit. MIL on steady. This condition indicates that the PCM has detected a malfunction that could cause tailpipe emissions to exceed 1.5 times the FTP standard, and potential catalyst damage may occur. MIL flashing. The MIL will flash once per second if the PCM recognizes a misfire or fuel trim problem that could jeopardize the catalytic converter. Once the engine is out of the RPM and load range posing the greatest threat to converter integrity, the MIL will stop flashing and remain on steady. The MIL will stay illuminated until the vehicle is operated for three consecutive trouble-free trips under conditions similar to those that existed during the initial failure. Similar conditions, engine speed within 375 RPM, the value stored in the freeze frame. Engine load, within 10% of the value stored in the freeze frame. Engine temperature, the same as the value stored in the freeze frame. On vehicles equipped with OBD2, failures detected in computer-controlled systems fall into one of four categories. Emissions-related failures are categorized as Type A or Type B, while malfunctions unrelated to the emission control system, such as ABS failures, are designated as Type C or D. Be aware that the malfunction indicator light will only respond to Type A and B failures. Powertrain Control Module, or PCM is the SAE generic term used for an OBD2 computer. The PCM is a larger, more powerful unit than its OBD1 counterpart. This is due to the complex software required to run the OBD2 monitors, as well as the enhanced diagnostic features provided by the manufacturers. The PCM processes input signals from a network of sensors and sends output commands to the appropriate actuators. In addition to making high-speed calculations regarding fuel control, spark timing, idle speed, etc., the PCM performs both continuous and periodic diagnostic tests, called monitors, on as many as 13 subsystems. Adaptive strategies are part of the PCM programming that allows it to compensate for component wear and other conditions affecting drivability and emissions. These strategies are based on information stored in PCM memory which is a volatile form of memory. Consequently, if the battery or PCM is disconnected, the information in the PCM Keep Alive memory will be lost, and the computer will have to relearn the appropriate values. Relearning is accomplished when power is restored to the PCM and the vehicle is operated under the conditions listed in the manufacturer's relearn procedure. During the relearning period, a reduction in vehicle performance may be noticed until the adaptive values have been restored. Designing a program that allows an engine to meet strict air quality and fuel economy standards while providing excellent performance is no small task. However, this is only part of the challenge facing engineers assigned with the mission of developing OBD2 software. 
The reason for this is the countless variables involved with the running of the diagnostic monitors. Although programmers do their best to factor in any contingencies when writing this complex code, periodic revisions are often required. Reprogramming consists of downloading new calibration files from a scan tool via a modem into the PCM's electronically erasable programmable read-only memory, or EEPROM. This can be done on the vehicle using the appropriate equipment. Since reprogramming is not an OBD2 requirement, however, many vehicles will need a new PCM in the event software changes become necessary. The greatest benefit of OBD2 standardization is the universal diagnostic connector used for scan tool communication. Known as the Data Link Connector, or DLC, this is a 16-cavity design complete with power and ground circuits at pins 4 for ground and 16 for B+. These circuits eliminate the need for a separate power cable when connecting a scanner. According to OBD2 regulations, seven cavities of the DLC are defined by the SAE and are common to all vehicles. The remaining nine cavities are reserved for the discretionary use of the vehicle manufacturer. Be aware that some cavities in the DLC may not contain pins regardless of whether the cavity is SAE or manufacturer specific. For example, SAE cavities 2, 7, 10, and 15 are reserved exclusively for data transmission lines or bus circuits. OBD2 vehicles are required to have the DLC located close to the instrument panel within the area that extends from the driver's door to 12 inches or 300 millimeters beyond the vehicle center line. You should be able to spot the DLC from a crouched position with the driver's door open. The data transmitted from the PCM to the scan tool is known as Class B data. While the data itself is common to all OBD2 vehicles, manufacturers were allowed to choose the speed at which the PCM transmits the data. This is known as the communication protocol. As a result, the Class B data circuits in the DLC will vary according to the protocol being used. In addition, a generic scan tool may not be compatible with all available protocols. For instance, generic scanners produced before 1997 may not communicate with a vehicle using the ISO 14230 protocol. The following information contains current protocols along with their corresponding DLC circuits. These are examples of communication protocol variances used by manufacturers. Another protocol you should be familiar with is the high-speed version of CAN, or Controller Area Network. This is a two-wire, low-speed communication system that operates at approximately 500 kilobits per second, which is more than 50 times faster than current SAE and ISO protocols. While CAN will significantly increase the speed at which data is transmitted to a scan tool, current aftermarket scanners will be unable to communicate with the new system. Unfortunately, it's unlikely that a simple software upgrade will remedy the situation. CAN is a mandatory requirement by the federal government for all vehicles produced for North America by model year 2008. The OBD2 system uses trips and drive cycles as the basis for executing diagnostic tests, called monitors, on systems and components. trip is a term given to a key-on, engine-run, key-off cycle, during which time the vehicle was operated in a way that satisfied all of the enable criteria for at least one monitor. The OBD2 drive cycle consists of various vehicle operating conditions such as idle, acceleration, cruise, and deceleration. In order for the PCM to recognize a drive cycle, the key must be operated in a way that satisfies all of the enable criteria for each monitor, with one key-on, engine-run, key-off series. Completing a drive cycle is necessary for all of the monitors to run. In addition, the successful completion of a drive cycle will set the readiness status of the monitors to ready. Be aware that the various operating conditions that make up a drive cycle do not have to occur in sequence for the drive cycle to be complete. 
In addition, while all OBD2 systems execute the monitors according to a drive cycle, the details regarding the different operating conditions vary between the manufacturer and the OBD2 criteria. Enable criteria are the parameters of OBD2 which must be met at certain conditions, such as time, speed, temperature, throttle angle, etc. These parameters are the minimum condition requirements to be seen by the monitoring software. Examples of enabled criteria fall into areas like engine operating conditions, engine runtime is greater than X amount of time, and coolant temperature is greater than X temperature, or vehicle operating conditions like ignition key on, or vehicle speed is greater or less than X miles per hour. This is a very small sample of criteria the OBD2 software looks for to compare, rationalize, and determine if conditions have been met to then run the monitor for completion. In order to meet the enabled criteria for the monitors, the vehicle must be driven to certain parameters that allow for the software to be supplied information from vehicle conditions to meet enabled criteria for the monitors to run. SAE has designated a generic drive cycle that is a compilation of manufacturer's drive cycles and has averaged out the criteria to make it a bit more technician friendly. It is important to note that the conditions of the drive cycle must be strictly adhered to when performing the drive cycle and more importantly that the brake pedal is not used to slow the vehicle during decel periods. Please note this drive cycle is for non-Delphi controlled vehicles and is designed for it to be performed on a dynamometer. This drive cycle is designed to push the PCM and allows for plenty of time for certain emissions systems to set up and meet the enabled criteria for a monitor to run. The drive cycle for Delphi vehicles is significantly different and is more driver intensive compared to the non-Delphi drive cycle. Again, attention to the vehicle driving requirements and conditions must be stringently followed and met. Also notice that there is a key off and key on start cycle included in this drive cycle and there is a mandatory with time between key off and key on start of one minute. This cannot be shortened. If so, you will have to start the drive cycle over. Also remember that the GDS will lose communication with the PCM. This drive cycle too is designed to be used on a dynamometer. This is an alternative generic drive cycle that can be used on Delphi and non-Delphi controlled vehicles. Its design is the result of multiple validations and will get any Delphi system to run all of the monitors. On some Melco and Siemens vehicles, the EVAP and Catalyst monitors may require more driving. Total drive time is 20 minutes one way and allows for a second cycle to be performed during the return to the shop if it is needed. One, drive cycle information. OBD2 drive cycle. Drive cycle required tools, scan tool, all associated cables and VCI for flight recording, paper and pencil watch or clock displayed on scan tool screen. A passenger is highly recommended to operate the scan tool for flight record and review of monitor readiness status. Two, drive cycle. The process of the drive cycle is as follows. 10 minutes of highway driving at speeds between 60 and 65 miles per hour followed by 10 minutes of city driving, stop and go, that includes a minimum of four idle periods. Three, highway portion. With the scan tool, verify the readiness monitor status should be not completed. It is strongly recommended that the negative battery cable be disconnected for at least four hours or longer reconnect the battery cable, make sure the fuel tank is more than one quarter tank full and no more than three quarters tank full. EVAP considerations. Engine must be started and run until
until ECT shows at least 110 degrees Fahrenheit before highway drive section. Four, connect the scan tool and set up for OBD2 monitoring. Select monitor status and verify monitor readiness status is set to incomplete. Then set the scan tool to current data to prepare for the flight record. Start vehicle and move to test drive on highway, turn on cruise control. Merge onto highway and accelerate to 60 to 65 miles per hour as quickly as possible as soon as cruise speed is achieved. Set cruise control and begin flight record cruise with no decelerations for 10 minutes. Try to utilize a flat or highway surface with as little or very little elevation changes as possible. Distance traveled should be approximately 13 miles. Once cruise test time has elapsed, cancel cruise control and decelerate closed throttle and no brake for at least five seconds. Five, city or stop and go portion. After cruise time completion, exit the highway to drive in stop and go traffic for 10 minutes. During this time, at least four idle periods must be achieved. At this time, it is suggested to record your flight record to save in a file for data transfer later. You can pull over if need be. This would qualify for one idle period. Just do not turn the key off. Idle period consists of a stop at a traffic light for at least one signal cycle, or you can utilize a local parking lot for a stop point. Suggested that you drive five minutes out and then five minutes back to return to the point of the highway. Before returning to the highway, review the monitor readiness status. Most, if not all, should have set to completed. After review of readiness status, return back to shop. Follow the same cruise protocol, speed with cruise control for 10 minutes. This will aid in any readiness monitors that had not been set during the first portion. Link back at shop, record data, and save flight record file for future reference. Be aware that the various operating conditions that make up a drive cycle do not have to occur in sequence for a drive cycle to be complete. In addition, while all OBD2 systems execute the monitors according to a drive cycle, the details regarding the different operating conditions vary between different manufacturers and the OBD2 criteria. A driving cycle consists of engine startup and engine shutoff. The data displayed on the scan tool indicating monitor readiness status varies among manufacturers. The scan tool will display the word complete when the monitor is run, while others use words such as ready or done. 